I started the next um, recording, so you're good to go. I had a couple questions. Um, you said that you're doing a PhD, right? Yeah. And that the programs can be like five to seven years long. Yeah. So, um, like, if you go straight into a PhD without a master's, you're, it's going to take at least five years, uh, at least in computer science. Um, but I think realistically, it's more like six, maybe seven. How long is a program that you're doing? So it sort of just depends. Um, so, so like it takes, there's sort of like a minimum amount of time based on the number of credits that you need. And, but like in theory, you could take nine hours a semester and like knock out your dissertation and maybe get it done in four years or something. But um, it sort of depends on how long it takes to get your like dissertation done and stuff at the end. So it might take, yeah, you know, sorry. So it's, that's why it varies. That's a big in theory to knock that all out in four years. That's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> Yeah, I think I heard uh, I heard a professor say that they've had one student ever do it in four years, and it's because their company was paying for it only if he could get it done in four years. So, so he made it happen, I guess. Um, Are you? Oh, go ahead. Okay, uh, you mentioned that there's different areas of research. Which did you choose? You picked one already. Yeah. Um. So it's sort of like there's sort of a lot of gray areas between the areas of research uh, I found. Um, but so I originally, like in, in all my applications, I kind of said that I wanted to do computer vision research, mostly because it sounded interesting. And also I had some experience with it from my REU um, and working with Dr. Simmons on uh, the deep learning stuff. Um, and so then I, so, so I talked to a professor about it, the one that I I talked to him before and before I, or uh, like when I visited, he was like the one that I'd mentioned in my, uh, my sort of like letter of uh, whatever it's called, my uh, personal statement. Um, and so, uh, but, but, and so he said, he was like, yeah, um, you know, I, I have this sort of available and he's kind of explained like, you know, you, we could work on this and explain sort of the, what that would require. And he said, or I know another professor that I'm looking to like, we're looking for someone to work together on this other thing. So, so the thing that he was working on was pretty much computational imaging or computer vision, but it sort of like, um, was much more like, uh, like a lot of like signal processing, like, uh, kind of like electrical engineering leaning sort of things, which, uh, like, so when I said, you know, I was like, oh yeah, I think I'd like to do computational imaging. It sounds cool. Then I sort of found out what it was exactly and like what this project would entail. And I was kind of like, eh, okay, I don't know if that's actually what I want. Um, so then the other project um, was, um, had to do with uh, robotics. And uh, so the idea is like to place uh, sensors. So it's like robotic sensing um, and sort of like placing sensors on a robot um, and using the data from the sensors to move the robot and like, uh, how that would interact with a person who's moving the robot sort of manually. Um, so that's sort of like a mix of computer vision and robotics. So that's what I'm working on now is uh, computer vision and robotics is what I, what I would say. That's the short answer, but you got okay. the answer. Yeah. Uh, Carter, you had, oh, I'm sorry, Brian. Um, uh, you, you mentioned that to finish, you kind of have to turn into an RA uh, instead of just a TA for that. My experience just, you know, was not quite the same. I was, I was a TA the whole way through. Oh, okay. They didn't really have too many RA positions available at my school. Hmm. Um, and that's okay. It's neither here or there, but do they, just out of curiosity, is uh, Wisconsin, I mean, is that a guarantee? Like you get your TA, then after your, after your master's uh, is completed or whatever, you jump in or what's the process there? No, that's not, it's not like guaranteed. So like, I know, uh, like I know at like Wash U, uh, like because I applied there and I read about how they do it. Like, yeah, at Wash U it's like UTA for a year. And then I think during that year you sort of do rotations and like try to talk to different professors and do projects. And then after a year, it's like they, the sort of department places you in an RA position. So it's like very structured there. I think probably because they just don't have a lot of TAs and I guess they're well funded for some reason, <laughs> um, for private school. Um, I have to have uh, that funding. <laughs> yeah, um, but here it's like, no, there's no guarantee that you ever move out of an RA position. But everybody that I know that's done with their like prelim is an RA. Um, so like there's sort of like 
when you're doing a PhD, there's two steps. I think this is everywhere, right? There's, you do like your qual first, which is often like an exam, but here you also have the option of doing a project. Um, sure. So it's like after, that's usually after like three years uh, or here that's, at least you need awesome. to have it done by the end of your three years. Yeah, so I don't have to take an exam, which is kind of nice. Yeah, good, yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. And then and then you do like your prelim like a couple of years later, which is like and then after your prelim, you're pretty much just working on your dissertation, like just doing research. So like I don't know anybody that that's continued to be a TA after that point. So it seems like there's sort of like a, a, it's sort of like implied, but it's not. I guess it's not guaranteed. But it seems like yeah. So I guess in theory, yeah. So so were you so like basically as you're doing your dissertation, you were also TAing at the same time. Yeah, and and adjunct at Drury. Yeah, um, so oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah there's there's a lot. I was curious also. I want to kind of follow up with your TA. So you mentioned you you know do a little bit of assignment planning and grading and some lab work. Have you ever taught any classes yet, or done any lectures or anything? Um, no, I've never. So so I've TA the first two semesters. I TA like basically what's like actually I forgot what Drury calls it, but like an intro to programming class. Maybe that's what it's called sure. at Drury. Um, <laughs> uh, and so, uh, so in that I did like I directed labs, which was almost, okay. uh, you know, not quite like it's not giving a lecture, but like I would go over the assignment with them and and help them through. We, we do like a walkthrough, and then that was part of. I guess since we didn't do RNAs, we would jump into more like mm, try to direct sure. the class as well. But yeah, sure, yeah, I, I, I know that's an option, that. and that's what some people do if they're interested in like teaching more like later yeah. on. Like, I think you can like, there's even, there's even like classes that are just taught by like there's like full instructor positions for people that are like done with their prelims like like it's like you actually are just in charge of the class on your own as far as i know are you going to work on the same project uh like until you get your phd i think i'm going to work with the same people like i don't plan on switching the, so I'm working with like two professors who are sort of informally like my advisors right now, but it doesn't really, you know, it's not really formal yet, but I like working with, with them and, and they're, you know, they're like looking for funding for me and things. So I think I'll keep working with them and sort of, but you know, who knows what direction it'll lead. Hopefully I'll be done with this little bit of the project in a, you know, in the next year and then we'll move on to something else, I guess, but probably related just because I'll be, I'm already, you know, I'm sort of like learning about this one thing. So, is this part of a small research group? You said there were two professors. <clears throat> I know when I was working on my PhD, we had, I think, three or four professors in semi group theory and three or four students working with them. And we, okay. we had a weekly seminar thing. Do you have something like that? I wish we did. There are some groups here that have that, like the programming languages group is kind of big here and they have like a nice little group of people like that but no i'm the only student that's working with these two professors it's sort of like a weird overlap i think because one of them is uh does graphics and robotics and the other one does computer vision so it's sort of like i'm the only grad student working on this project we have an undergrad that started working on it which is nice um, but yeah there's like sort of like there's sort of like some sort of like lab groups uh but there, it's there's like a weird like gap in like uh, like the lab that I'm in is the graphics lab, but nobody in there actually researches graphics. So it's like <laughs> it's like some remnant of like back when they actually did research graphics. It's like there's still the room and like the group of people. But like I sit with people who like are doing like mostly robotics uh, stuff. So yeah, but not necessarily the same project. So I mean we talk, but like it's not exactly collaborative right now but hopefully more grad students will join that are, you know show up that are interested and also like they just need more funding for the project to fund more grad students you know like we're trying kind of trying to get like initial results and like get an initial paper published that'll help get more funding hopefully i think is the idea so after you got your admittance how like how much details did you know about it? And then from that, how did you choose between there and Mizzou? Um, I sort of like, uh, okay, so once I got admitted, they tell they told me how much they'd pay me 
uh, how much you know how much the stipend would be. That's sometimes that's like public information, but sometimes it's not. So um, they they told me that, um, and uh, I, that's pretty much most of it. I mean, pretty much everything is like publicly available as far as like how you want to compare. Uh, you know, if you want to compare the requirements for different degrees and the professors and like sort of the way they run things, like all those websites are public. So you can sort of look at those things ahead of time. I guess once I got admitted, then I had like more direct access to the people there to ask questions to. And obviously when I visited, I got a lot of, you know, chances to ask questions to people. Um, as far as like making the decision, I sort of made the decision before I got admitted, like I sort of, uh, like I was saying, Mizzou was my safe school and the other ones were all kind of like a reach. So I kind of said to myself that if I get into any of these reach schools, I'm gonna go to them instead of Mizzou. That's the whole reason I applied. Um, Cause you know, if I was gonna go to Mizzou any otherwise, if I was gonna go to Mizzou anyway, there was no point in applying to the other schools, right? So it was sort of a non-decision for me in that way. I guess the way that I decided UW would be a reach school over Mizzou was just like, looking at, um, so uh, there are like program rankings, which are like somewhat informative, but um, also just like looking at like the, the size of the department and like the type of research that they do just seemed more up my alley. A large department is kind of nice for just having more like opportunities and things like more options. And UW is like really big. <laughs> so I think there's like, uh, I, it depends how you count it, but there's like at least like 60 CS professors and much more if you count ones that are like affiliated from other departments. So, and I think there's there's a few hundred grad students at least. The, the CS 200 class that I taught, the intro to programming class had like 900 students in it, which is just crazy. <laughs> so yeah. Or so were, you were you one yeah, of seven? Were you one of Yeah, I was one of seven. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. There were, I think, nine TAs, yeah. Thank God, because yeah, <laughs> otherwise that would be impossible. Yeah, there's one, the, the, the instructor who teaches that, that's his full-time job is just teaching that class. I mean, he's basically <laughs> running a school by himself, so. <laughs> yeah, it's like, um, like your department there is like three in size. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it really is. It's, yeah, it's crazy. And like, I. So there's no like, and yeah, the classes that I've been in, even the grad level classes might have upwards of like 70 or 80 students in it, which is. Wow. Yeah, so, so it's sort of like a, maybe like a, I guess you get less direct, you know, time with the professors and things, but it's kind of nice just cause there's like, you just have so many more options. Like as far as like the number of classes that they offer and things, you know, like I'm never gonna get to take every class here. So, but that's a good thing cause it means there are a lot of options. So when you are doing your research, are you doing any programming? Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, when I was saying like that I've done more math than programming, did I say that? Or, or at least I thought it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think the research is one of the places that I've done the most programming uh, because like sort of like there is some math to it. That we're, we're sort of like figuring out how to solve this system that determines where the sensors are on the robot uh, based on what the sensors see. Um, but sort of that's sort of like done like with other people or as a group or we sort of work through those things together and then it's my job to actually like implement it and get it to work, which is pretty much just all programming, which is fun because because it's all like up to me, you know, how, how I want to do it and stuff. So. What language do you use? Um, so for the more sort of like uh, data science things, like the more like, uh, I guess like for just things that I just want to do, like just just like when, it, when it's up to me, I choose Python uh, because I like it and it's easy. And also like a lot of other people know how to, it's like a popular language. So if somebody else needs to use my code, it's they're more likely to be familiar with it. Uh, and then I've also had to learn, um, there's, there's this, uh, it's not it's not an operating system in the sense that like Windows or Linux is an operating system, but there's something called robot operating system, which is just like for robotics. Um, if you're interested in robotics, like it'll come up. Uh, it's sort of this like framework for interfacing with robots. Um, that like I guess the code that you write for it is in C, 
or C++, but like the actual the actual system is the thing that's hard to learn. So I've had to learn that too, but it's been fun. Okay, well, Dr. Barker, do you want to take it away? Sure, that's, that's a fair that segue. Would be nice. Thank you. Yeah, so that was much. really, really informative, Carter. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, well, thanks. We really enjoyed time. hearing about your experiences. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of fun because my graduate experience was not from a school that says at all, uh, at right. all. Uh, but yeah, my my math and that department comprised the whole department. And I think we had 10 total faculty there. So yeah. um, that was, you know, smaller uh, for sure. But we also had a lot of TAs, you know, um, in, you know, kind of like Drury, the benefit of that is you get real direct access. And so, uh, but I liked a lot of what you said about, you know, like, yeah, it's important to look for the people at the grad schools who have the, you know, research interests that you're in, but also be aware that your research interests are going to change. You know, like I, I told everybody at the uh, last advising meeting, you know, like I was dead set on not teaching ever. And then they threw me into a class with a hundred people and I was like, Oh crap, I absolutely love this. This is delightful. Um, and now I started working hard towards being a teacher on the research end of that. My master's is in algebra. Um, I did a little bit of work specifically in, in um, commutative algebra and homological algebra. Um, but uh, then finished my qualifying exam there and then that and that a teacher didn't have just like took on a different student wasn't me so i went over to two applied mathematics and mathematical modeling for my phd and that was or it was kind of cool to be able to go from a relatively abstract setting to a very not abstract setting and, and understand kind of how the how the formation of questions change uh you know for a research project that's definitely different um there which was kind of fun but um I think you covered a lot of important stuff about graduate school. So I'll kind of leave that big junk of stuff for that. Um, I'll kind of talk about how I am about as non-traditional a trajectory uh, as you'll get, but it's still, it's still fine. You know, like I, I'm still working the job I love, you know, and, and, and have the degrees, you know, and able to do that. So um, even my undergrad trajectory, I thought I was going to do sports management and like math as a minor for fun then i interned at a sports facility and hated it and then just finished that degree but also kept a math degree and then i right out of school worked at a bank but not at any like really mathy position it was mostly a sales position there and the idea behind that was i did want to go to grad school i knew that so i'd study for my gre you know subject stuff and kind of look around for schools and uh, my um, wife, uh, we weren't married at the time, but she was, you know, looking toward the dental school. So we would try really hard to apply together, which is not necessarily recommended in terms of how to find the school that you want to work at, because it's, you know, not everybody knows that's your wife or that's your spouse or whatever, you know, like right there. Um, I, I knew. Uh, and so that was a, that was a deciding factor for me, you know, and, and that's fine, but it's not traditional um you know and then okay um but yeah i did work for two years outside uh of any math program i did keep in contact with drury i even um audited i think complex variables uh that was taught one semester that i was out of school but i audited that as a whatever not not a student anymore that was kind of fun um and also got me out of work in sales for like an hour and a half every day that's great time so uh, uh but you know i did that went to school I, you know, the school that we got into like i said it, it was ta they were funded fully it was not the best salary uh there i think i made less than twelve thousand dollars a year um there so that meant you know like hey rooming you know with somebody oh look luckily you know my wife that's great that worked but uh also you know just it's it's a student life for sure you know there's no uh there but Another thing you mentioned too is you were able to really be disciplined with your time. That's very important. That's very, very important. It's important not to lose who you are into the, the coding or into the research. Like you are not just a researcher. You are a researcher. That is that is your primary, but you're also a person who you are outside. I, I watch
watched a lot of students forget that around me, and I think that's important not to uh, there. Uh, I also didn't have an interview process um, either. It was apply and get it applied or and don't hear from it. I still get emails back from West Virginia thinking I haven't gone to grad school yet. Uh, that was one of the schools that we applied. They keep sending me email. Um, but, uh, but that one, I actually applied straight for a master's program, hoping to eventually go into a PhD. And I actually applied to um, KU's the PhD program and UMKC as well. Um, I, I took my qualifying exams, but then just kind of checked and see because I wanted to see if I could do some, um, a little bit of uh, combinatorics and, and UMKC didn't have that, but KU did. Um, so I, I kind of looked into that and ended up not, uh, not, I don't think I didn't get it. I think I just ended up not fitting with that instructor because I saw him, I met him a few times, the guy that I was going to work with and you know, we hit it off well at the beginning, and then it just kind of fizzed out pretty quick um, afterwards. So that was just like, okay, well, cool. We'll go do math modeling. Uh, uh, and then, like I said, I, again, non-traditional, we moved back to Springfield while I was still finishing up my PhD. I had no more classes at that point. Um, but I, I did, so my TA, they, after like the first year, um, they could let you lecture classes and, and do some lots of plans for it college algebra, intermediate algebra, some basic, you know, you know, 101, 102 stuff, a couple of uh, statistics classes here and there. And the more of those you did, the more they give you. So I taught quite a few calculus courses, Calc 1 and 2, at UMKC while also working on the research. And um, that was a lot. I just frankly, that, that was a lot um, to be lecturing multiple you know, three, four, five-hour courses. And... and also trying to do research so just you know it does you know, learn to say no to some things if you can it's really hard to when you're a student you know and in that it is really hard to as a student but it's important to you know know where your priorities have to be and, and what's good i wanted to be a teacher i taught you know um, but it did make some of the classes really hard uh, just because you know there's less time to work uh outside of well no there's just less time to work besides teaching um, but, you know, in the long run, that's good because it's got me a lot of experience that I've drawn from, you know, and I'm getting more and more each time. But yeah, I worked uh, adjuncting at Drury since 2018. Um, and, and one thing I think um, Sarah mentioned, Carter kind of mentioned as well, um, a lot of these, like, how did you get your job? How did you find the school? How did you, you know, like, this, like the answer is, well, I knew somebody. You know, like I knew somebody who was leaving or I knew somebody in school or I had researched at Mizzou. I knew I was going to get in there, you know, or something like that. I, I knew somebody at Drury, you know, and they happened to have, need somebody to teach geometry and I was qualified and that worked, you know, and then just kind of kept working on the PhD, more classes were needed to be taught and kind of, okay, this is still working. My wife's now in Springfield, you know, doing her thing. Just that, that is a way to build up. So Sarah, who looked the most professional out of all of us, go Sarah um, and and probably is the most professional out of all of us um, uh, had a lengthy interview process for a fantastic job and that was not my experience um, I do expect I think if you know if there's ever like the next like assistant professorship that was opened up I expect more interview process there um, you know and and if I were to go to a different school certainly there'd be an interview process that's a little bit more lengthy there as well outside of that um, but I even worked, I mean, we, we don't like to admit it, but sometimes you're not making as much money as you think and you got to work more. Uh, so uh, I was working at uh, the bank again, part-time just because I needed some extra funding um, and that worked. I'm still keeping up those relationships, like all, all those, you know, my old bosses and everybody there, not because I want to go back and work at the bank. I don't, don't tell them that. Um, but it's just, again, the, the value of knowing people and, and, you know, like, Hey, I knew somebody there who knows, I know for sure. I mean, there's a lot of programmers. There's a lot of mathematicians that work for the banks that I work at, work at banks, work for whatever that stuff. And it just, it never hurts to have another foot in the door somewhere like for potential students that might need the job there or something like that. But, you know, that, that's a big part of it. And I, I think. I, I always say every time, if you ask me like what's the most important part about grad school, about working, about whatever, it's people. It's always people. The people matter the most. You know, you are going to like what you 
do if you like who you're working with. You know, you'll you'll find a way. Literally, I didn't think for the life of me I'd like teaching. I didn't think for the life of me I'd like um, algebra when I first took it from Dr. Browning, uh, and then I loved it. Uh, and then I didn't. You know, I got a master's in it. Uh, and then I really didn't think I'd like applied mathematics. I tried to avoid that and say, well, you just should do it. can apply to a different school for it. And then did that. Oh my gosh, now I, now I can model diseases. And oh man, there's a global pandemic. So it's a rife market for that. You know, like, is it, it's, it's all about who you're working with. All, always about who you're working with. And, and I, I just can't stress that enough. And I'll say it probably until I die. Because <laughs> I really do think it matters that much. Uh, in terms of, I think, that hopefully answers a lot of your kind of questions in terms of expectations versus what you know what I had or what I didn't. Man, I I was apparently not very good at setting realistic expectations because I kept kind of running around, uh, going around there. But um, I mean, on all, uh, what's the the idiom right? If you're looking forward at your path, it looks like a zigzag. If you look back, it's a straight line. You know, uh, every uh, Sarah was saying, you know, like programming languages was a really important class for her in school, but it wasn't like all the other ones were insignificant. When you got into your job, they had needs and you filled the needs. You know, the the job has specific needs and you learn how to fill those needs. And what you know, hopefully we're trying to do at school is get you acclimated to being able to see a problem and, and work towards a solution for it. As general as that sounds, you know, we want you to be able to be mile wide more than an inch deep. Okay. I don't know if that was what you were looking for, um, but Carter covered a lot of grad school stuff, so I didn't want to kind of redo that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, but yeah, what that was great, Colin. Thank you for sharing all of that. And I must say, we're glad to have you at Drury. Very glad to have you at Drury. <laughs> so I'm quite happy to be at Drury. I really, it's it's really, I, I love it. I really do love working with everybody. They teach and everybody. It's it's very fun. As, as far as I know, Sarah's experience in uh, the interview process is really standard for jobs in computer science. And Carter's experience with not having an interview is very standard for going to grad school. Um, for academic positions, we usually have a two day long interview process. We fly someone in and they have meetings with people and lunches and dinners and breakfasts and lunches and dinners and then out the next day. It's a very intensive, long interview process. When I interviewed at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, it was one full day of meetings and lunches and dinners. So um, different jobs have different requirements, but um, I think, like I said, Sarah's experience is pretty standard for computer science. You can come hungry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, multiple lunches in one day. <laughs> yeah. It feels like it <laughs> by the end of the day. I do think it's pretty standard now. I don't know if it was when, you know, where you applied, but um, for if you're applying for a teaching position, you do have to prepare a few lectures, you know, and, and teach a few classes to whatever, you know, as a guest thing there. It's the same. It's the same thing that Sarah had for like you got to program in front of people. You, you know, you do what you do. You know, like they got to make sure you can do it right. So, so I wanted to ask, uh, Dr. Barker, did you like? So I was saying like it's probably not worth it. They're like you maybe shouldn't reach out to professors before grad school, but I think that varies by the school and and the program and stuff. So did you or do you think if someone's going? You know, applying to grad school for math that they should try to actually like contact a professor beforehand and maybe that'll help them. Or... I don't think your advice was bad. You know, I think it's more important to find research areas that you might like and that does involve looking at the professor's site, you know, and seeing their papers and what they actually did publish. Some schools you can, the, some professors will list their grad students and some of those grad students will have their own websites as well and you can kind of see what they're doing and that gives you maybe better insight as to what your experience would be if you were working under that um that faculty member um but i the reason why i had reached out to that professor was okay you and umkc have a lot of um sometimes there's mixed classes but the faculty at one gives us talk at the other a lot uh and so i had already met him uh, at the time 
uh, and, and, you know, asked him a few questions at his little seminar. And then he invited me to come to one at KU. And then I did. And we kind of chatted a little bit more and talked about a grad program. So in that sense, it was not a, like a blank email to saying, hey, I'm going to maybe be right. a future student. I haven't applied yet. That's a no-go. Right. I don't think that's going to, you know, do much. But if you have some contact, it's not wrong to, you know, yep. extend that a little yep. bit, I don't think. And, and Dr. Browning may have different advice, too. Um, no, I agree. Of course, I always uh, took Sarah's approach of short-term planning and just doing whatever sounded most interesting at the time. And uh, and I really liked how my life has turned out. So <laughs> that's a good approach, Sarah. <laughs> you can't really see too far into the future, you know? So you have to do something you like. And if you keep doing things that you enjoy, then you'll be ready to do things that you enjoy. So it's nice, it works out. Well, thank you so much, Brian, for and, and Jay Lee for putting this together. Yes, yeah, thank you, it's a good I, event. Yeah, thank you to the speakers and to all the people who came to, it's great. Yeah, yes. Um, I have one question uh, for you, Dr. Barker. I don't know if you mentioned it, I might have missed it, but what was your interview process like for your position? For Drury or for? Yeah, for uh, Drury. Okay. Uh, so this was another one of the, like, how'd you get your job at Drury? Well, I kept in contact. I was walking with Dr. Simmons. I don't know why I was even on campus that day, but I was talking to him a little bit. Um, and I was telling him I was teaching online for UMKC. And he was like, wait a minute, so you're all but done, right? And I was like, yeah, you know, I think I've got, half of a paper left to write you know and I, you know and he's like well, i need you to teach geometry and then i, I think uh dr coates was the chair at that time and, and also i kept in contact with him too and so we, we that was it i mean we just talked and he said can you do that would you be willing you know and i was like what's the time you know can i and i was like i'd make sure i could work it out because i was working also at the bank again um, and once we kind of got that all squared away it was it was much less of an interview and much more of a like, hey, there's nobody in Springfield that can teach geometry right now. Can you do it? I was like, yeah, sure. Yeah, I can do that. Um, so that is not, I, mean, I don't know how rare or how not rare it is. I, I do think the most important thing is to keep in contact with people. And I, I really do think that, I mean, you know, if, if a job needs somebody and you happen to be in the right place at the right time, or if you have kept in contact and they, they're like, oh yeah, I remember I knew that person did that. They, sometimes they'll call you. You know, or if you are reaching out and say, hey, think of me for whenever this happens, if you can afford to be that patient, which who knows, you know, it's, I mean, Dr. Browning, that's exactly right. Do what you like. You'll find yourself in the right places at the right time, you know, for what you, what you like doing. I, I knew, I knew I liked and loved my wife and I kept following her around and liked and loved Drury and, oh, look, they coincided. That was great. Uh, so that, that worked. <laughs> But there's an extent to which you had a four-year interview during your undergrad years. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, it was. I guess it was a very long-term interview of uh, one or two classes a semester. Yeah, that's pretty true. Yeah, <laughs> so we knew we knew what you were capable of. <laughs> I'm going to take that line from now on. That's yeah, a four-year interview process. This is great. Yeah, they even paid me for some of my interviews. Yeah. <laughs> So you, well, you had to pay for some of the interviews too. So. <laughs> yeah. Very, very true. Well, thank you all again. This has been a very special evening to me to see all of you here. This is awesome. Yeah, it's nice to see everyone again. <laughs> Likewise. Yeah, keep in contact. It's a really good thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, everybody have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good night, everybody.